HOA fees. Do they provide any benefits or are we just throwing money down the drain? I'm covering this subject on today's video. Are you ready? Then let's go! Hi, my name is Dean Ueda and I'm a real estate investor and a realtor in Honolulu, Hawaii. Today, I want to talk about HOAs or homeowner associations. I'm going to discuss what they are, some pros and cons, and things to consider if you're thinking of purchasing a home or investment property that is part of an HOA. Then you can decide if it makes sense for you. But before I start, please click on the subscribe button to keep in touch with me and get more great information from me in the future. Okay, let's get into this. First of all, what is an HOA? Well, according to Investopedia, a homeowners association is an organization in a subdivision, planned community, or condominium building that makes and enforces rules for the properties and its residents. Those who purchase a property within an HOA's jurisdiction automatically become members and are required to pay dues known as HOA fees. Some associations can be very restrictive about what members can do with their properties. An HOA typically has a board of directors that are elected by the association membership uh, to enforce and oversee the HOA's rules and regulations and oversee the HOA management that runs the operations that maintains the common areas, amenities, and facilities. Okay, sound pretty straightforward, right? Well, there's a lot of nuances involved in HOAs that can make them complex and maybe not so cut and dry. Here's the good, bad, and the ugly about associations. Let's start with the negatives. First of all, there will be inefficiencies. You will not get a dollar for dollar return on your fees. That's a known fact. Typically for condominium associations, you have property management companies that will run the operations, so they will need to be compensated. Also, HOA board members are usually volunteers and may not have the wherewithal needed to manage real estate. Besides operations and management inefficiencies, another disadvantage is that you have specific rules called covenants, conditions, and restrictions, or CCNRs, and house rules that all members need to follow. Some people don't care to be told what color to paint their home. Others hate the fact that anytime you want to do a maintenance or improvement project, you need to go to the HOA to get their approval. Also, whether you use the amenities or not, you have to pay your HOA dues. On the positive side, those CCNRs and house rules could be viewed as a good thing as you have set and enforced community rules. These aspects of HOAs can actually maintain the property value of the community or condominium. Another positive is all the amenities you may get without having to maintain them. Having a pool, a barbecue, tennis courts, reading rooms, all a stone throws away can be quite enjoyable and make life so much better for you if you appreciate those types of things. Okay, here are some things to consider about HOAs. Understand the rules, CCNRs, and house rules up front. Make sure you know what you're getting into. Take the time to read the documents mentioned and talk to the HOA members past and present to see what they have to say about the association. Also understand what is included in your HOA dues. I sometimes hear complaints from condo owners who say their HOA fees are too high and a waste of money. I remind them that the maintenance, upkeep, and cost to ensure their building structure is included in their fees. I had to paint the outside of my house a few years back and it costed me $5,000. The cost to replace a roof on a single family home could be upward of $20,000. And structural replacement insurance is thousands of dollars every year. My point is, although yes, there are inefficiencies in these fees, HOA members are getting benefits. So looking at HOAs with my investor hat, I do not necessarily avoid condos because for the HOA fees, I keep in mind that when I'm running my pro formas, I can keep a smaller reserve estimate for repairs and maintenance because a lot of those costs are captured in the HOA fees. And that's the perfect segue to my last consideration. The cost to operate an HOA typically increases over time. As buildings, facilities, and amenities age, they need more maintenance and eventually need to be replaced. As such, your association fees will change and will probably go up. Although last year, I received a letter from my HOA that my fees were gonna go $100 down and that made me really happy. But that was the first time that has ever happened to me in my 18 years of belonging to various HOAs. 
HOAs can also issue what's called special assessments to members if they determine that the association does not have adequate reserves to cover upcoming projects. When you are in the process of purchasing a property that has an HOA, review the HOA buyer's packet that typically includes financial statements, budgets, recent board meeting minutes, and very important, review the reserve study to determine if the HOA has been appropriately monitoring and building up reserves to adequately fund future deferred maintenance projects. Well, I hope you have a new perspective on homeowner associations. And as I mentioned earlier, I'd love to keep in touch and please subscribe to my channel and click on the bell to get reminders of my new videos that come out every Monday. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. So until next time, double shaka.